Good morning. It's truly a pleasure to be here. I really enjoy visiting Rome, and today travel is really so simple. We just go online, we make our reservations, we pay the bill, and away we go. What if going to Mars was as easy as buying an airline ticket? Would you go? I know I would. I'm, I'm very interested in going to new places, discovering new things. So today, I'm going to ask you to bring your imagination. I would like you to imagine that in a few decades, some of us in this room will be walking on the surface of Mars. Well, since we're all becoming explorers, we need some inspiration. And I think it's inspirational to note that this weekend, as we do every year in the United States, we're going to be celebrating the achievements of Christopher Columbus, who pushed west beyond the known over 500 years ago and who was inspired in a like way 200 years earlier by Marco Polo and his push east. Our yearn for exploration continues to this present day, no longer going farther east or farther west, but we're now going up and out. We're going to be going beyond the thin layer of our atmosphere in the region known as low Earth orbit, where international teams have been collaborating for over 15 years on the International Space Station. We're even going to go beyond our celestial neighbor, the moon. We're now going outward, deeper into space, to Mars. Why Mars, you might ask? Well, Mars has fascinated humanity for centuries. Mars is a rich destination for scientific discovery and exploration as we push our presence deeper into the solar system. Its formation and evolution are similar to our own planet, and study of Mars may help us to understand our own planet's past and perhaps its future. In its past, Mars had conditions that were suitable for life, and exploration of Mars may yield the answer to the fundamental question of the cosmos. Does life exist beyond Earth? At its core, NASA is chartered to go beyond the known, pioneering advances in aviation over the last century, and now we're embarking on the journey to Mars. At NASA, we're very fond of saying it's technology that drives exploration. But in reality, it's innovation that gets us those new technologies. But at this point, where and how do we get new ideas? Our traditional approach has been immediately to jump to physical sciences and engineering to get us the technologies we require for space exploration. But that limits our ideation even before we start. Can we look to other fields to help us develop the technologies required to explore space. It's interesting to note that life scientists are now engaging physical scientists for solutions to their vexing problems. And I believe that we should do the same. I believe that we can reach out to biology to help us enhance our creativity required to develop the technologies needed to go deeper into the solar system. A few years ago, we started an external speaker series as part of our creativity and innovation efforts to get new ideas. One of the talks was by an organization that was leading the integration of education, design, and commercialization, all using biomimicry. The premise was to use 3.8 billion years of development for the solution to our current problems. Frankly, when I heard that, I really had my doubts. I really doubted how what I viewed as a bunch of fur, fins, and feathers could help with the design of the advanced turbo machinery systems needed for next generation aerospace vehicles. However, we're going on a journey. And I think you'll agree with me that when you go on a trip, you need to do so with an open mind. And so it really was time to look at new ideas. Looking back, 
If a genius such as Albert Einstein tells us to look deep into nature and then you'll understand everything better, perhaps we should have taken that advice. Images of our planet from space have taught us that it's a beautiful but very fragile oasis. And those images have also taught us to respect nature more. This especially resonates with the incoming generation. And I found that the idea of finding bio-inspired solutions to our current problems to resonate at the grassroots with our researchers. Each year at NASA, we have a call for early stage innovation projects. And two years ago, some of our early career researchers proposed to look to nature to improve airfoil designs. They noted that in biology, a lot of the structures that are exposed to fluid flow tended to have grooves or ribs on them. These researchers focused in on the whiskers of harbor seals. The seals use these whiskers to detect the flow of seawater around them, and that helps them catch fish. Interestingly, these whiskers are not smooth, but have undulations on them. So these researchers use advanced imaging techniques, including micro CT, to define the profiles of these whiskers and then design a new turbine blade. Computer modeling showed the promise of improved performance would dramatically decrease drag. Frankly, the results astonished me. These researchers had looked to nature and found improvements in a technology that we not only thought was mature, but that we heard or thought was optimized. So my initial doubts started to turn to enthusiasm. I started to think, could biomimicry help us with some of our bigger problems? For example, could it help us in our efforts with diversity and inclusion? We at NASA strive to have a workforce that represents the entire nation. We know that if we only pull from a small segment of the population, we rob ourselves of talent. This is especially true that we worry about not having enough engineers and scientists to fill the jobs that are being created and also the jobs that are currently being vacated. In engineering, one of the issues is that we simply do not have enough women. Only about one in five engineering graduates are female. But this is not for a lack of interest in science and technology. Because interestingly, the life sciences graduates more women than men. So our challenge, and frankly opportunity, is to attract the women that are interested in the life sciences into the physical sciences and engineering. And I believe that biomimicry is uniquely positioned to serve as that bridge. Well, one way you solve difficult problems is to get a lot of people working on those problems. And that's where the idea of linking biomimicry with open innovation via prizes and challenges was born. And we apply that to the problem of keeping astronauts healthy as they explore the surface of Mars. Each day on the International Space Station, astronauts have to exercise for over two hours. This is in order to keep them healthy and to counter the effects of the loss of gravity. The space station is a large, large structure. It can accommodate large pieces of exercise equipment. Future missions will not have that luxury. And so astronauts, as they travel six months to, the, to Mars, will have to remain healthy in order to be able to land their spacecraft and then operate on the surface. NASA's Orion spacecraft is going to accommodate four astronauts that are going to have to do the same aerobic and resistive exercises as the astronauts on the International Space Station, but in a much smaller space. So one of our researchers started to ask, how does nature generate forces in small packages and then regenerate energy for efficiency? Can we glean principles from nature to help us in the design of compact exercise devices required for deep space travel. It turns out we absolutely can. Interestingly, both nature and space explorers 
are interested in efficiency. We're interested in minimizing both mass and energy. So there's a commonality there. Last year, NASA issued the Bio-Inspired Advanced Exercise Concepts Challenge, and we offered up to $15,000 in prize money for the design of a mechanism that was bio-inspired, weighed less than nine kilograms, and used no external power. The response was fantastic, with hundreds of participants involved, and in the end, we received over 50 final submissions from around the world. So, we've seen now how biomimicry helps us increase ideation on the local level. Bringing in open innovation via prizes and challenges opens up innovation worldwide. But what we really need is not ideas, we need hardware. So how do we get the hardware that's required to go beyond the known? Well, looking to nature again, nature builds things in an additive way. Right now, even if we understood the complex biological structures in nature, traditional subtractive manufacturing techniques prevented us from building them. However, right now, visionaries are engaging the next generation, and they are turning public libraries into public maker spaces. They're equipping them with 3D printers and advanced art and design tools. So now the convergence of 3D design tools, additive manufacturing, and the maker revolution are all coming together to help us build the hardware that we require to go beyond the known. One of the things that's certain is that the international space agencies all agree that future exploration of the solar system will need to be a collaborative endeavor. Because of the complexity, all of humanity will need to be involved. We're now seeing that biomimicry combined with open innovation, combined with maker revolution, are now opening talent pools to us that we previously have not tapped for space exploration. Over the centuries, exploration has been driven by new technology. Our challenge is to keep the pipeline of new technologies flowing with new ideas. Disruptive ideas come from across disciplines, and biomimicry is now teaching us not to ignore 3.8 billion years of investment. With that, biologists are now helping engineers rethink the previous limits of their designs. The next step is to add other fields. Imagine adding paleontologists, anthropologists, and artists. And I just all, all like you to imagine adding you. I would like to invite you to join me as we turn imagination into reality and embark on the journey to Mars. Thank you.